So in this video, I want to talk about what comes after LLMs. Now, of course, large language models are extremely popular today. ChatGPT, Grok, Claude, Gemini. You can run them locally on a Raspberry Pi, on an Android smartphone, on your laptop or on your desktop. They really have become a, an impressive piece of technology that we use day by day. However, LLMs aren't the full answer. They are powerful, almost magic, but they're not the full answer. Now I'm gonna be using a talk by John Carmack where he talks about some of the things that he's researching in and the direction that he thinks things should be going. John Carmack, who is he? Well, he is the founder of id Software way back in the day. Basically he invented first person shooters. You're talking about Wolfenstein 3D, Doom, Quake, and all the stuff that id Software done. That was basically him. And then he moved on to Oculus, virtual reality stuff. And then he moved away from there and decided to take up research into uh, AI stuff. Now his research stuff into AI was previously kind of in his wealthy Victorian gentleman, kind of mad professor kind of stage where he had enough money from what he'd done at uh, Eid Software and Oculus. He had enough money to fund his own kind of research. Now I had started off in sort of what I called it Victorian gentleman scientist mode. But really he needed to employ people, he needed to collaborate with others, so he started up Keen Technologies, Keen being a reference to one of the very first games he worked on, Keen Technologies, and he just recently presented at an AI conference some of his visions and thoughts for the future. So if you want to find out more, please let me explain. Okay, so John Carmack is a keen advocate for large language models, and he did say that if he wanted to go ahead and start an AI company just to ride the wave, he could have started a company researching large language models. That's what all the cool kids were doing. But he felt there was more to be done and what comes after large language models. All the cool kids are doing an LLM startup and raising huge amounts of money to do things. So in his talk, he basically uh, tries to understand what we need to do to achieve artificial general intelligence, AGI. And the kind of the simple task he set himself is, what happens if you had an artificial intelligence agent, whether that's a robot or it's just set up on a laptop, whatever, that could come to a game that it never played before, a video game, because his background is in video, and then start playing it and actually get quite good at it very quickly. Now we do that. Now the system he's using is talking about the Atari 2600, hundreds of games available for it, but it's very old tech retro, which means the graphics aren't too hard to decipher, much easier than compared to these very complex 3D scenes with reflections and shadows and everything that we have in modern games. But the gameplay is just as hard, so it's a gameplay thing. Now, how if I went to an Atari 2600 game that I'd never played before, Within a few minutes, I could work out what the controls do, up, down, left, right, fire, how, you know, the aim of the game, how my score was increasing. And then through several hours of gameplay, I would get better and better at the game, forming strategies, working out how to conquer each level progress through the game. Now, what he's talking about is uh, designing a system that can do that. And we can't do that today. An LLM can't do that. We can't do that today. We have There are no systems that can take an unseen game that they haven't played before and learn how to play it very quickly. Now, LLMs can't do that, but LLMs can do quite amazing things. So before we go any further, I want to tell you about Viaim Rec Dot Earbuds. As well as being great sounding earbuds with noise cancellation up to 48 decibels, the Rec Dot is an AI meeting assistant that can transcribe conversations, identify speakers, and even generate to-do lists. The reason they are called Rec Dot is that on the case itself is a small red button. Tap it and flash record activates, instantly capturing real-time audio without even needing to open an app or take the earbuds from the case. It can record conversations from up to seven meters away, making it perfect for capturing spontaneous moments, reminders, and meetings. Once the recording is complete, Viaim AI kicks in to transcribe the audio, translating from multiple languages if needed. You can also use it to get live translations from things like YouTube videos directly onto your phone, making it incredibly useful whether you're working, learning, or traveling. Viaim AI doesn't just transcribe, it understands. After recording, it can generate summaries and action-ready to-do lists, turning passive conversations into productive insights. 
Other features of Rec.Earbuds Earbuds include a four mic array for crystal clear calls, high res audio with 11 millimeter dynamic drivers and a find my earbuds feature that comes built in. They also have a long lasting battery life up to nine hours on a single charge and 36 hours with the case. They charge quickly too, giving you an hour of playtime in just five minutes. Even if you never touch the AI features, the RecDot is still a fantastic pair of earbuds for everyday use, ideal for commuting, working in noisy environments, or just enjoying your favorite music. But I'm sure you'll want to explore the AI features. These earbuds don't just play sound, they understand it. Whether you're a frequent traveler, a multitasker, or just someone who wants earbuds that do more, Viaim RecDot offers premium sound and practical intelligence in one sleek package. They're more than just earbuds. Viaim's RecDot is your intelligent AI meeting assistant. So what John Carmack is doing is designing an agent, an artificial intelligence system that can interact with the real world, that's able to play Atari 2600 games. Now he's not doing that by wiring it into the emulator uh, or into the game system, you know, reading screen maps, reading memory, reading registers. No, he wants something that interacts like we do. So there's a webcam that looks at a TV screen that's actually, or a monitor that's seeing the game being played. And rather than hardwiring into the joystick, he's actually got some servo motors that can push the joystick left, right, up, down, press fire, and so on. Now that would enable a whole bunch of real world interactive agents, whether they're robotic or simple forms of robotic uh, system, automated systems that can interact with the real world. And he's doing that through the idea of gameplay because that's his background. Now, currently there are lots of gaming uh, artificial intelligence systems that can play Atari 2600 games at superhuman level. They can beat all of the games. They can just destroy all the high scores. They can just play unbelievably much better than humans can and really just obliterate these games. But here's the catch. To do that, they have to play the game for a month, 24 by seven for a month. So obviously we, we, we don't do that as humans. A general intelligence wouldn't do that. You don't play non-stop for a month. If you divide that by three, you're looking at three months, eight hours a day just to get to this high level. Now you can't have, we can't afford to build AI systems that you say, go and load these clothes into the washing machine and it takes it three months to work out how to do it. That's just, we can't do that. We need things that learn quickly. So quick learning is one of the things that John Carmack is working on. And the system that he demoed at this AI conference was a, a system that could learn to play Atari 2600 games in just a few hours. So he actually set up a system on a desk there on a table and set it up the night before and it play during the night. So we're just talking about eight hours of gameplay, 12 hours of gameplay. And by then it was starting to play the game reasonably well. Now there's obviously lots of work that needs doing in this area, but quick learning is one of the key factors. Now humans are quick learners. You know, you can be shown something once, twice, three times, uh, depending on your particular aptitude in a particular area and you're going to pick it up. I mean, I remember, this is a true story, I am not musical at all. And I remember saying to a friend of mine that I was listening to a piece of music, it had a very complicated, in my opinion, guitar section, and he's a very good musician. And I said, do you know this song? He said, no, I've never heard it before. He said, let me listen to it properly. He listened to it, he picked up his guitar and played it note for note. Now, I can't do that. I could do that maybe in other domains, but that's what he can do with that particular skill set. He's a quick learner in an area that he's an expert. And that's what we need for artificial intelligence systems. Something that's a quick learner in a domain that they know about. So when they're presented with a new problem, they can learn that, not just infer from past experience. We've got that already. Now we need something that can learn how to handle this new situation. And that's the kind of thing that John Carmack is working on. Now, just to round this out, it's worth mentioning that King Technology is kind of in stealth mode. They're not aiming particularly to build a product. They're trying to do the research. I guess the investors and the backers 
are looking to own some kind of intellectual property for whatever systems, algorithms and techniques that they define. That's how I guess they're aiming to get their money back. But they've poured in a significant amount of money, which means he's able to now have various, some of them very well known researchers. Uh, I think he said there were six people that he's currently working uh, in his company with him on developing this stuff. So while there are lots of stuff going on, ChatGPT, Claude and Gemini, and they're all just progressing, there are other people that are looking at other things. And of course, in the end, there will be a fusion between large language models, these strategy algorithms, these learning algorithms, these other ways of tackling problems, and there'll be a fusion that brings them all together somehow, we don't know yet, somehow to bring us that next step in artificial intelligence. Okay, my name is Gary Sims. This is Gary Explains. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do give it a thumbs up. If you like these kind of videos, then why not stick around by subscribing to the channel? Please also check out my Patreon page. Okay, that's it. I'll see you in the next one.